All right. Good morning. Well, noon. Happy noon, everybody. Um, not sure if we're morning or afternoon here. Uh, I see our numbers slowly logging in. Um, so we'll just take a couple of minutes to let everybody get started, get their sound on um, while we get ready to get going. So uh, today's webinar is with my colleague Whitney, she's going to be going over some Christmas wrapping and some beautiful, um, as you can see behind her, some beautiful bows and decorations for Christmas presents so that your Christmas presents can be the envy of all. Um, I personally am looking at these, looking forward to seeing how she did them. So a um, few quick notes before we get started. If anybody is new to this uh, program, welcome. If you have attended all of these and heard my spiel every time, Thank you, just bear with me for the next couple minutes. Uh, since this is a Zoom webinar, it's not a meeting, we can't see you or hear you. So if you have questions during the class, send those into the Q&A box. Um, Whitney, I think will be letting me know when she's ready to take questions. During the call, we can, we can feed them to her so that she can answer them. If you guys have any technical issues, feel free to send those. I can address them as I am able. Uh, we will get those taken care of for you. Uh, we are recording today's class. So if you have to miss part of it, we will be sending out a link tomorrow. Um, Whitney works at our Gainesville store. She's one of our designers out there, does a ton of work in our Christmas shop. And thank you, Whitney, for joining us today. So I'll go ahead and let you have the floor. All right. Thanks, Sally. Uh, so hi, everybody. I'm Whitney. Um, I've been with Maryfield Garden Center almost eight years full time now, but I did grow up working at our Fair Oaks location on and off. So I'm very familiar with Maryfield Garden Center. And um, so I have lots of experience with ribbon and decorations and ornaments and all sorts of stuff. But I will say my love for gift wrapping comes from my mother. So thank you, mom. <laughs> uh, so as you can see behind me, I have gift wrapped a lot of packages and, you know, incorporated a lot of uh, bows and ribbons and greenery, uh, fresh and artificial greenery, um, ornaments. I even stuck a cute little wreath on this guy. So I'll pull them forward so you can see them closer, more towards the end. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I have so much fun doing this. And I think that when you gift wrap something for someone, the presentation is part of the gift. And I think that can make an otherwise kind of ordinary gift that might not have cost you a whole lot of money or, or something that you just didn't feel like was enough. You can elevate that so, so much by the presentation, by the gift wrapping, by just going a little bit of the extra mile just to make someone feel special. So um, I'm gonna show you guys first how I actually gift wrap a package. Um, I'm always surprised every year with how many people just wanna see how you just wrap a, a package. Um, so I'm gonna do that for you first. Just, I, I might only do one or two in general, but um, I just wanna show you how to do that. And hopefully I have enough here. I think I do. Maybe I don't. Okay, well, we're going to do a small one first because my other package, well, hold on. Let's see if this will fit. It's going to do this size box, a nice flat one. This kind of package would be great if you had like shirts or an outfit or something like that. That's not going to fit. Sorry, guys. We're gonna do this guy right here. Okay, so this is much smaller. It's just a little cube. So the way I kind of figure out how how much paper I'm gonna need, so I, I kind of know that this is easier with smaller package. So I kind of roll it down to make sure that I can cover all sides. So because this is smaller, I don't have to go this way as, as far. Then I take my edge and I kind of measure like that to know I'm going to be able to cover it. And then I cut the corresponding side about the same length. So I'll have more than enough paper here for this. The goal is to have enough paper to wrap it without having to put little bits and pieces together, but also not use too much paper because 
copy paper can be expensive, guys. So trying to be conservative at the same time with, with what you're using. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So because, like, say I have something in this package that I want to be sitting face up. Of course, I'm going to turn it upside down. I kind of do that and pull my ends because this is the bottom of my package. It's not as smooth. Get my box kind of even in there. Move this up and over. Move it out. You can see I have, have it right there. And I'm going to take some tape and just put it right in the center first. And that's going to help hold it so I can kind of use both of my hands a little better. I like to add a little bit of tape towards each end so it's a little more uniform when I fold the ends down. Okay. This is a nice, cute little gold paper. Uh, most of my wrapping paper I'm using today I got from Marshalls, believe it or not. Um, but you can get some cheaper, cute combinations that way. And this is gold with like a little cute polka dot. So it has a little bit of texture and glimmer to it, which is nice. So for the ends, I kind of go in on the side, push my paper in, and then I crease it. Like that. And then I do the same thing on this side. Now, because it's longer, I kind of just this in to a point. Just let that point overlap. Face it. Because sometimes your box slides. I don't actually take the bottom yet because I want to flip it up like this and use the box to hold it in place and push my box down so that it's nice and tight. And then I'll do the same thing over again. So it's important when wrapping anything, especially if it's something that's breakable, I like to put some padding inside the box. So like tissue paper is great. Uh, just kind of holds things in place and makes so that it's not like rattling around inside of the, the package too much. So do my folds, put my little points together like that. Now these guys are not touching. So I'm gonna use two separate pieces of tape or I can use one a little longer and kind of bridge the gap and put it down like that. I don't know if you can see that. So I'll do the same thing here. Okay. So you basically wrap almost any square package the same way, square, rectangular, anything like that. Super easy. Um, just sometimes you got to do some little, you know, laying it flat do a nice little seam and um, that helps you get nice crisp lines and lots of little tugging on the corner so that it's a nice square block. So I wanna look and see where my tape line is and I know my ends have tape, so I kinda of wanna cover that up. So this one, let's just say it's a, a beautiful Christmas ornament and I want this one to be really special looking. So when it's something super special, sometimes I like to do like the metallic colors and I like to make it feel a little dressier. So I will, uh, I'll pick ribbon that has like a slight shine to it. Something that's, you know, a little, little different, feels a little fancier. Um, so I actually, when I do this, I like to pick my toppers and then I match my ribbon to it. So I actually picked these beautiful, this is a little clip bird and then a cute little, it's like a cushion star, but it's got beautiful beads. So I'm gonna put those on top, but I'm gonna do that with my ribbon. So I pick, I'm trying to make it all go. Let's see, this might be, I think we're gonna wrap with the purple because since this is a smaller package, you don't want your ribbon to be too overwhelming. So here's my, one side. I am going to do like our four way thing. So I'm going to start, lay it flat on top, flip it over real quick. 
pull one ribbon out. And then I do like a, I guess that's like a 90 degree turn real quick. You just kind of get it nice and flat. And that's where, that's the bottom of your package. So then flip it back over. Right now you can't see too much of my nice gold paper. Let me fix that. So I'm just gonna loosely, not loosely, tightly tie a knot, but I'm not gonna do the double knot yet. See how it holds. I think we're gonna be all right. Okay, so I smooth out my ribbon a little bit just so it lays nice and flat. And you got four sides like that. Now is a great time to stick anything that has like a loop or a hook on it so that you can like really secure and tie it on there. So I will add that in here. I'm actually going to cut my ribbon because I know I'm gonna just use this as a tail. So I'm gonna loop this over my second tail. And sometimes if it just feels too long like that and I want it more in the center, kind of twist my little loop and feed this back through. Okay, so there we got the start of our little top. Okay, so I wanted to use just a little bit of gold in the top. So I'm actually gonna mix together three different ribbons, the purple and the blue. I'm only going to do like a small little loop and tails for each one because it's, you know, it's a bow, but it's not like your typical kind of bow. It's just like a series of loops and, and um, tails. So this is going to be the center of my bow because I have that gold in the paper. So it's going to be broken up by the color of the other ribbons. So just kind of get your tail started, do a small little loop, and then you twist it and then you have your second tail. So I'm just going to snip that guy, hopefully. Nope. I'm not gonna, I'll have to wait. I'll do that when I have two hands available. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And I don't want this to be too big. So I'm just going to do a short little tail, do my little squinch. I might do yeah, I'll probably just do one small loop and tails just like that because I don't want to overwhelm my little box here. So instead of using wire, like we do with just a bow, a bow that you can secure to something, with packages, I typically don't use wire because then you have to worry about covering it up or anything. And instead, I have these wonderful tails I can use. So I just take my little series of loops kind of use my fingers to hold it in place. And I just tie it on there. So we have that. So you can kind of see the start of it. So it's pretty, pretty simple right now. And I have these big long tails. So I can do one of two things. I can continue on and do like a little shoestring bow or like with the purple and then have two purple loops, or I'm just gonna cut these tails back and just kind of plume them up as though it was a loop, but use it just as a tail. So I think that's what I'm gonna do because like I said, this is such a small package. I don't want to overwhelm it with too much ribbon on the top. So I'm just gonna like cut my tails now, make them all pretty. I like to make them a little uneven. So have some kind of dribble down the side and then have some kind of stay on top. So this guy, I think I'm gonna have him come down the side a little bit. I'll give you this one too, since it's... Okay, now I have my cute little bird. So you just kind of fluff it up like that. Have a nice little thing going. Pull my little ornament to the side. So there's 
kind of the beginning or close to the end. Then I have my cute bird. This is for your, your peacock lovers. So I'm gonna find a good little spot in the center to clip it. Uh, so we have so many awesome, awesome, awesome ornaments that clip. So it's meant to clip on part of your tree, but you can use it for wrapping packages because then you can just put it into your bow on your packages and have it kind of nestled on top of there. So it's a bird and a little nest of ribbon. So there you go. There's that cute little guy. So that is a quick little example of something I've done. This is a similar, slightly smaller package. I used one type of ribbon for this guy, very traditional look. And instead of like having the ornament drip down the side, I actually slid this cute little, it's like a round, um, it's a little round ornament that's got some glitter. I just slipped it under there and it's just cute and simple, but adds a little bit of glitter amongst the bow and it looks so pretty. So, okay, here's gift number one. All right, put that here. So that was our first little color scheme. Uh, I like to pick these ribbons and ornaments and stuff specifically to the person. Um, I think it makes it really fun. Um, you know, if, if someone really likes things that are a little more kind of on the rustic side, I'll pick paper that goes with that. If it, um, it's someone that really likes glamour and glitter and, you know, really beautiful gems and stuff, I'll pick paper and ribbon and ornament toppers that go with that. So I think it's a great opportunity to show that you care, you know, and, and show that you love people and take a little extra time to do it. Um, but you know, this can be expensive too. You know, ribbon is, can be costly, but there's plenty of great ribbons out there that aren't overly expensive that you, you can get on a larger bolt and like wrap all of your gifts with the same materials, just in different ways. So now we're gonna wrap one that's gonna be a little bit more on the rustic side, I think. Let this guy. So same type of thing, just big flat one. Because I can't do this, I can kind of eyeball and tell it that it's not gonna fit that way. I pull my paper out and make sure that I know all this is gonna cover it. So if I cut it right here, it'll overlap nicely. So I'm gonna do that. Don't worry guys, I have some packages I already wrapped, so I'll just do the pretty decorations on top for you. I am also of the type that I really like to wrap my gifts based on the theme of my tree at home because they're going to live under my tree longer than they are going to live anywhere else. So if I want it to look really pretty and beautiful, then I'll buy paper that goes with the theme of my tree, the ribbon that corresponds with the tree pretty good. So I do that too. Let's see, here we go. All righty. Quickly do this for you. You can just watch me. I don't think I, the same type of thing that I did on the first one, just bigger. And you can do the same thing with a box that's four feet wide. It just takes a little bit more patience. That doesn't have to be perfect. As you see, like right here, this is a little uneven. So that'll kind of hide itself when I do the ends. So I'm gonna fold in my ends again, a little crease. Sally, do we have any questions so far? We do. Um, the question is if you'll be showing us how to wrap any presents that are in round containers or tubes. So perhaps you might have some tips for that if you've experienced. Yes, and you know what? 
I forgot to bring a wine bottle. I was gonna bring a wine bottle and show you how I like to, oh, okay. Someone has a wine bottle like Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So I can do that and there's several different ways, um, but I can show you how I like to do it so that it's like really fun and festive and the wine bottle can stay upright. I mean, you can kind of tell that it's a bottle of wine, but um, they don't know what type. So it <laughs> could be a really good bottle. <laughs> I don't think you can go wrong with that as a present. So <laughs> you can't. <laughs> no one's gonna mind knowing what it is in advance. Yeah, it's like, hmm, it looks like it's gonna be tasty. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Alrighty. Yes, there's lots of different ways you can wrap something like that, uh, or pillows. Pillows can be really tough to wrap sometimes. Yeah, non traditional shapes. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, boxes and rectangles and stuff like that can be a lot easier um, to do. So, wrapping things that are awkward. Be a little, a little harder. Just got to get a little creative. So this time, I kind of, I'm going to keep all my seams on the bottom because I'm going to have it sitting kind of flat for people. So here's the seam, there's the seam, and there's the seam. So kind of covered up any imperfections, but your ends look nice and clean. Okay, so for this one, uh, I'm going to incorporate some fresh greens, um, which hold up great, even if you do this a couple weeks ahead of time, um, and you have them inside, they'll, they'll still look nice on the day that you, um, you do it. I, I'd say maybe two weeks or so. Sometimes you might just want to slip them in right before you go to, to give them, um, just because they can dry out. Um, but, or if you're worried about that, you can easily do a cute little artificial pick of mixed greens. This is just one small example of something that you can use that has like pine cones and berries and a little ornament on it and just kind of tuck something like that on there can look adorable. But for this guy, I'm going to cut a few different pieces of fresh evergreen. So actually have some, I think this is white pine, some boxwood, I have a little magnolia, a little bit of Fraser fir, and I think this is a type of cedar. So I'll probably do like a little combination of that. But first I'm going to get my, get my ribbon going. So I'm gonna do a cute little, a rustic one. I don't know. Let's let's pick one out this time. We can do this cute plaid. That would be nice. Or kind of go with the theme of being a little bit more on the rustic side and do this cute, cute, cute little red truck. That fits. Okay, we're gonna do that. So one thing to think about is who you're wrapping the gift for. If um, you know it's someone that has trouble using their hands, might have arthritis and would have a hard time undoing the bow, I wouldn't do it the four-way style that I did this guy with because that's gonna be some work to try to get it undone. So I, when I know the person is, is someone like that, I'll just do a strip. I won't do the four-way so they can just literally slip it off the top. Um, so just be mindful of who you're wrapping the gifts for, because you do want to make it an enjoyable experience for them to get into the package. Um, so just, you know, kind of thinking ahead a little bit. So with this one, I'm actually going to start on the bottom, flip it over, lay it flat. Flip it over again. It's really easy to do when your box is empty. When it's really heavy, it can be a little harder. So I'm just going to tie this in a knot and I will go ahead and do my second knot just so I can get my greens under there and held in place pretty well. So this one I'm just going to do a really fun bow and greens. I'm not even going to put a topper on it, but you certainly can. Um, I will say I, I try to 
do a lot of topper ornaments and stuff that cut on the flat side or something that's pretty tough that if the package gets dropped in transit that it um, won't break. So if I were to put a topper on this guy, you could do something like this. This is actually made of metal. It lays pretty flat. You can't break it. Um, something like this. This is so sweet. It's a little kind of metal and gem wreath. Very festive. So sometimes your toppers are totally part of your gift. And uh, it really can add a lot to it. This is a metal little angel wing ornament. I think that's so sweet. Um, so if you know that the, the gift isn't going too far, then you know incorporating something that is glass or blown glass is fine. Um, just kind of think ahead, like how do you take your gifts to the various places to give them to people? Are you having to pack them in bags? Like just think ahead, because the last thing you want when uh, doing this for someone, so you take all this time to wrap it and pick out your your ornament gift topper for them is to have it break on the way. So just thinking ahead, um, that's that's what I, I try to do it. But sometimes it's just too beautiful, so I just be extra careful in transit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So always good to have a pair of Joyce Chen's on hand to do a little trimming. So I'm just going to kind of cut a branch or two so that it fits my better. And I'll make like a very small little bouquet. Cedar's really nice because it lays pretty, pretty flat. So boxwood looks nice. Maybe a little white pine. I don't want to cover up my cedar. So sometimes I'll just make a quick little bouquet of greens. Sometimes all you need to do if your ribbon's tight enough is just kind of slide it under and hook a little bit on the opposite side. And that'll help hold it in place. And it smells good. So if uh, you know that the person you're gifting this to has an artificial tree and typically doesn't have that fresh green smell in their home, this might be a nice way to incorporate that for them so that they smell the smell of Christmas. Um, so I just like to tuck those in there. You can always wire them in or use an extra ribbon to tie it, um, but for the most part, it stays pretty good. So now I'm gonna make just a simple little loopy bow on top. Um, if you're not the best bow maker, an easy way to do this would be to slip underneath and just do a cute little shoestring bow and you'll have some extra tails. So that would be great. Um, so right now I just have like a little loop that kind of looks cute too, just a quick tie. So, and if you kept it like this, you could easily stack other gifts on top of it and it wouldn't really hurt it too much. Um, so, but in this case, I'm going to do a nice, big, beautiful, floppy guy. So, and another question I always get each year is like, how would you wrap a gift and, and make it look special, but, um, easy to travel? Uh, so I always say, you know, doing something like this, not with the greens, but just doing a quick tie with your ribbon can make it feel really special and maybe you know, slipping a very flat ornament in there um, can make it feel special, but also make sure that you can lay multiple packages in a box uh, for shipping. So, and then obviously inside the package, make sure you add um, a lot of extra, you know, tissue paper, bubble wrap, depending on what it is so that your gift can get there safely. So this guy, I'm just kind of started with a short little tail and I'm just making a series of of loops of various sizes and kind of building my loop size out um, so that what's in the center of the bow has a smaller loop. And then as I build the bow outward, the loops get a little bit bigger. So I, I kind of like to call this a poof style bow. And they're great for, for gift wrapping because it makes it feel really special. 
And when I'm done, I'll show you how you can kind of flatten your bow carefully so that in transit you can, you know, carry carry them a little easier so you're not worried about messing up your bow. You strategically squish it <laughs> so that you can easily fluff it back out. So, and I, I always think about transit because during the holidays, all my family lives around here, but uh, here in Northern Virginia, but we, we tend to drive a lot. So we're, we're taking all of our gifts, you know, in the car and uh, trying to make sure they all look beautiful by the time that they get there uh, is important, at least to me, because I like to do this. So I have four loops on either side and I'll have two short little tails. And once again, instead of using wire, I'm going to use the ribbon I have already on the package. I'm gonna kind of keep my thumb down in the center there and then switch hands. Yep. Okay, get it nice and tight. So that when someone does want to undo this, they can just kind of undo that one thing and then everything would kind of explode. And that's fine. A lot of people like to keep the bows. So in this case, you would just slip this off the end and then you have this pretty, pretty bow. So then you just kind of fluff it out. And you have a, a beautiful bow. You've got a couple extra tails. Got another tail here. So I'm just gonna do a little slant cut sideways. And there you have a very simple, cute little, little bow with, with just a little hint of your green sticking out from the bottom. But then you, you know, you touch them and it smells like Christmas. <laughs> so, all right, Sally, any questions? We're good on questions so far. I think everybody's eagerly anticipating the wine bottle wrapping. Wine bottle wrapping. Here we go. All right. Let's see. Ooh. Ah, good bottle. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> You're lucky you have our wine buyer in the office with you. I know. Ooh, this is <laughs> it's a local Virginia wine, Casanel. They're up in like the Leesburg area. Let's see, which paper do I want to use for this? Let's do this fun plaid. Okay, so how I typically like to do these guys is I you know, lay some of my paper out and I measure the bottom. You don't want too much paper on the bottom of your bottle. You want to make sure that it can stand up straight Otherwise it's gonna be wonky and you don't want your bottle to uh, lose itself. That would be no good. Okay, so I'm probably gonna cut right there and I'm gonna go ahead and cut down the whole paper because I'm gonna use some of that top paper. I wish I had some tissue paper too, because this is something that you can layer and have some tissue coming up out of the top of the bottle as well, but I'm having a looky right now. So I lay it down very carefully. So you could do this with anything that's cylindrical. You would just widen your paper to be able to, to cover all of it. So I know I don't want too much paper on the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of measure to half, you can see that. Kind of like I did the ends of the, the boxes. I measured a half, make sure that that's gonna cover it pretty good. And then I just kind of, the end of my bottles here, I'm probably gonna chop that little bit off of the end. Make sure that I have enough. Right, and then just like you would the box, you just kind of put it around it. Now this wine bottle has like a taper. The bottom is a little narrower than the top and that's fine. I would just kind of go with the angle of that. That way it's nice and, and smooth on it. So go ahead and tape that. I'm gonna tape it in like 
two places, kind of find where it tapers up, like right there, it starts going up to the top of the bottle. So I'm gonna do that first. Now I'm just gonna kind of do little pleats here. So, and I'm, you know, most wine bottles have the bottom that kind of goes up into the bottle. And I utilize that a little bit so that it's gonna help it stay um, nice and flat. So I kind of just do little, little pleats and fold inward towards that center. So I do that again. And you don't tape anything to the very end because those little pleats are gonna help hold everything in, in place. Oh, oh my gosh, I need to be able to tape. Okay. Okay, so you can kind of see some of that bottle, but that's all right. Like we said, they're probably already gonna know it's a wine bottle. I'll just use a little bit just to hold that in place, just in case. But there, it lays nice and flat. So here, what you can do, starts to gradually upward, and you just kind of squeeze it. If you had some tissue paper wrapped around it as well, this is like a good time that you could have some just kind of coming up like that. Um, I may actually trim a little bit more of this off because it feels a little too tall. It's always best to start off with a little too much because you can always cut more off. It's really hard to add after the fact. You can do it, there's little tricks. Not that guy. So in this case, I think I'm going to use a really easy ribbon. Let's see. This is just a red sheer. That's kind of metallic tint to it. Super easy to use. Uh, so let's see. Probably hide my my side that has my seam. That there. Wine bottles are great because you can always add a little wine charm off of it. Uh, you can have an ornament dripping down the side. Um, just for sake of example, trying to find something that's a little longer. You can tie it on one of two ways. You can either use your bow or you can actually slip it over the top of your wine bottle like that. And then you have a nice ornament coming off the side of it. So ignore the tag. <laughs> so you can either just tie it like a shoestring bow, but you know me, I like my bows. So I'm gonna do just the same red ribbon, just a few loops and then I'll tie it on and it'll kind of just feel like a little, a little more special. So do the same thing. Always start with my tail with these guys and do my little accordion. You never move your thumb. And I'll just do a couple loops. I'll pick a size that I think is appropriate for the, the bottle. I think I'm gonna do three loops because I'll have all these extra tails. Okay, so just like I did some of the other ones, I'm gonna tie it on. If you're having a hard time doing it with it standing up, you can lay it down carefully. You definitely don't want to let this one fall over. That would be terrible. Okay, I'm going to tie it in place nice and tight. And I'll show you a little trick. This is a great ribbon to do this with because it, it does have wire on the ends, but the actual ribbon itself is a little metallic. Um, this is like a, a play on something that we did as kids a lot. Um, you know, when you gift wrap and you have your scissors and it's that kind of streamer kind of ribbon and you pull the ribbon and it curls. Um, you can't do that with this, but you can wrap it around your finger or a pencil or anything that is uh, kind of cylindrical. Um, let's see, do I have? I'll use this, this will work. But it does help if it's like a smoother thing. So I'm gonna just wrap it around this guy. 
And that way you can kind of just make it a little fun by adding some movement with your ribbon. You can use anything, obviously. <laughs> but you just kind of do that and you have a little curl in your ribbon. So I like to do that every once in a while and it just makes it just makes it really cute. So this looks lovely without doing that as well. So you you can do what you what you want. Um, depends on like how whimsical you want your package to feel. So maybe I'll just do a curly on each side and keep the rest kind of normal. Let's see. Now you can use your finger, you can use pencil. Pencil or a pen works best actually, because they're smooth. work so good. Okay, so here's a little example for you. Good? Did it help? I love it. It looks like, a, um, like the, the poppers that you pull. Oh, yeah, that's fun. But what's inside? Wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That turned out really cute. Is that a gift for someone, Danny? We can just do that. Yeah, that it might be. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it's an extra from lighting one out. Oh, very nice. Okay, so let's see. I have a really cute one I plan on doing, and it's um kind of like a little bit more whimsical and child appropriate. So it's ornaments that look like candy in a cupcake. Um, and then there's another ornament that looks like a cookie. Uh, so, you know, this would be appropriate for anybody that likes that kind of look. Um, it's just really cute and fun. So, I'll move a few while I move a few things around. I'm going to do it on this package right here. I'm going to have a couple, couple more. This guy had pre wrapped for us, so it's saving us some time. Okay, so I picked out some cute little candy stripe ribbon. So I thought this was really fun um, on this. This otherwise is kind of a busy pattern. So always think about, you know, the pattern of your wrapping paper. If you have a really busy wrapping paper, you'd probably want to choose ribbon that is a more solid in color um just to kind of break up all that movement and kind of visual noise so like a solid red or a white or something like that but because of the the look of the stripe i thought it still broke it up pretty well and looked really cute so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna add just a little touch of this red in there so this guy i think i'm just gonna do the one side, like not do the four sided like I did on that first one. Oh, wait, I'm gonna switch it. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> now you do that because we're only doing one. When you are planning on doing your little 90 degree turn and doing that, that's when you lay it on flat on the top first of your package. When you're doing just one, you would lay it on the bottom of your package. I am going to go ahead and tie mine. Let's see. Now this ribbon, you can clearly see the backside. It has no pattern. It's just kind of a white, like almost a canvas. Um, so this is one of those ribbons that you'd be a little more mindful when tying to try to turn it so that you know both sides, the good, the, the pretty side is out. Um, but if you know you're gonna put ribbon on top of it, don't worry about it. I'll just cut my pre cut my tail. Pretty cute already. Simple, right? Sometimes just a little tie like that is all you need. 
little tiny strip of ribbon goes a long way. Let's see, what do I want to add to this guy? I have my, this is another one of those cute ornaments that has a clip on the bottom so that you can clip it on your tree or clip it into a bow or wherever you want. Um, this ornament is glass. So when moving this package around, you just wanna be mindful of that, but you can use its loop to kind of keep it in place. And then this little cute Santa cookie guy has uh, just an ornament hook on it. So you would have to just be pretty mindful of how you're gonna put that in there. Just make sure that either you use another piece of ribbon to tie through the loop of your ornament and um, just make it a little more secure or really uh, wire your ornament hook on there pretty good because you can always loop that through a part of your um, knot on your bow. So I'm going to use some of this just kind of regular red ribbon. This is actually outdoor ribbon. Um, it's a one and a half inch. It's something we use very often for like outdoor appropriate bows, but as you can see, it's adorable for anything. So I use this stuff for just about anything. All right. Just gonna do the same type of thing. Any questions, Sally? Or special requests? Um, special requests to uh, is about uh, if you have any tips on cookie tins. It's the same. It's cylinder, but not so tall. Uh, what is it called? On um, cookie tin. Oh, like uh, it's it's like the the round cylinder that's kind of low, right? Like short, you know, short and wide, not tall. And got wide. all the yummy like shortbread cookies in. Yes, like that. Yep, yep. Okay, so basically you would do that the same as you did the wine bottle, um, but you just have your ends be, you know, kind of shorter and you would accordion, uh, or not accordion, you would kind of pleat the bottom, just kind of fold in a triangle at a time and keep going down the line so that they all meet in the middle. And then you just put a little strip in the middle and you would do the same on the top. So in that case, I would just, you know, do some ribbon like this and tie it on the top to cover up that little, you know, pleated area on the top, but it'll still sit flat. Um, that's probably the best way to do one of those. Um, and oftentimes the packages of those cookie tins are really cute anyways. So you might not want to wrap it at all. You just want to add a little bow to it. Um, so I will say, it's probably hard, depending on the size of the, the tin, if it's a larger tin, like one strip like this would be fine. It'll probably hold on pretty well. If it's a little smaller, sometimes it'll just wanna kind of come off the sides. So doing the four-way one may uh, secure it a lot better for you. Um, so you just kind of have to try, try it out and see, but um, the whole pleating, Thing will work best to kind of cover up that uh, center on the round part. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Okay, and this guy, I just have my little red in there, adding that in. Some tight. Don't have quite enough to do a shoestring bow. So maybe, what I'll do in this case, cut my tail, I'll just get that out of the way. <clears throat> Actually, it kind of looks cute just being tied like that. Uh oh, I forgot something, guys. Well, this works out. you ever mess up like I just did, when you have to undo your little knot, it's holding your bow together. So just kind of slip your finger down on that red bow just to hold it in place. And because it's wired, it's not too, too bad. Um, it shouldn't fall apart on you because it kind of helps hold itself. And if I lift up my finger, you see it just kind of undoes a little bit, but it's not too, too bad. 
So I'm slipping my ornament string over one of my tails. So I got my, my little cutie candy right there. I'm not gonna worry about him because I can just pick any old spot to use his clip. This guy, hmm. Probably hook him to the gold string that's on the candy wire. So sometimes you just gotta critically think and kind of see what you're what you're working with and uh, utilize little bits that help make it happen. Okay, so I'm redoing that. I have my little loop there. Okay, and then I'm gonna put Santa on the other side, my Santa cookie. Kind of pull this gold loop over here. And I'm going to use my ornament hook, loop it on the gold loop, and then bend my wire in my ornament hook. And that'll help make sure that it doesn't unhook itself. And then I just fluff up my red bow, move my tails opposite of one another. Cute. Tails here. Shorten them up a little bit. Whitney, we've had a request come in for if you have any tips for adding ribbons or ornaments to gift bags. Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, I don't have a gift bag. Maybe I do. Oh, I see one. Okay. I'm going to get out of the screen real quick and I'll show you how to do that. Oh, wait. First, let me put my cupcake on there. So I'm gonna pick a spot in the center of my bow and just kind of put them on there. So I got all sorts of cute little ornaments on there. Got Santa, got candy, cupcake. All right, I'll be right back. Let me grab this bag. We have a lovely Maryfield Garden Center bag. Very nice and some beautiful red tissue paper sticking up out of the top. I love to have all my gift bags kind of just look just like this. Um, sometimes I'll layer different color tissue paper so it feels even more ta-da. Um, but I, when putting a bow on it, I don't like to put the bow on it like this at the top because then I think it's kind of hard to get in there. You end up ripping the bag. I like to actually put it right here and have it kind of come down the front of the bag somewhere. So I'll make this pretty simple just as like a, a concept for you. So this little red would be nice. Okay, so similar to how we did on the packages, I kind of pre-tie a little strip on there. So I'll probably need about that much because I'll use that to um, keep it on the bag. Like that. And you could just go ahead and do a cute little shoestring bow and that's really would be enough. But then I'll just do a couple loops. Yeah, let's see. If you were to use the floral wire, like I've uh, demonstrated in the past, you can always use that to tie it on to that point. And then you just kind of do a sharp turn. You bend your wire down and let it dive down into the edge of the bag and the inside and just let your tissue paper kind of hide it. Um, Sometimes you have gift bags that have a little lip on the top inside. Sometimes I'll actually fold it up into that and hide it completely and you never even know it's there. So that's a way that I've done things so that sometimes wire, using floral wire to hold your bows kind of keeps it looking like extra, extra pretty. So um, I'll do that as well. It just kind of depends. Okay, here we go. I'm going to lay this down just for ease. <laughs> so, very similar to what I've done to just about everything else during this talk. Just kind of hold my bow with one of my other fingers and use that 
the little tie and then I just fluff it out. Pull some of my tails down a little bit. Fluff my loops out. And you gotta, when you do this method, sometimes the center of your bow doesn't look quite as pretty when you tie it with another ribbon. So you gotta just kind of play with your loops a little bit to make it cover up that center. You just gotta pull them in towards the center a little bit. And then it, it kind of gives you a center point that things are coming out from um, versus seeing like a knot in the center. So, but yeah, that's, that's what I like to do. You can see that the red on red, but yeah. And you can do that with any gift bag. Um, but you know, this is a nice kind of blank slate. It has a nice pretty print on it. You could have done any combination of ribbon and, and tissue paper on it. Um, if your gift bag has, you know, a busy print, I would probably do something that's a little more um, solid. It can have texture and, you know, slight color variation, but just, you don't want it to look too busy. Um, I always try to try to keep things, you know, you want it to go, you want it to feel really cute. Um, this guy is kind of a little monochromatic. So I knew this was going to pop against this paper, this paper, but this mimics the paper, as you can see but they are not the same company. It's just like, you can just kind of pick these things out and they, and they go and, you know, I have this cute little ball ornament. So I kind of plan everything. I pick colors and I, I want them to, um, to just kind of match or at least go together. But isn't that cute? That one turned out. Let's see, any other ones you need to see? Oh. This one turned out to be one of my favorites. It was really cute. So I had picked this beautiful vintage looking Santa ornament. It has the beautiful like aqua, teal, um, some sage green and pinks and stuff. So I picked my ribbon to correspond with the ornament. So this is a really good example of like choosing a color palette and just kind of going for it. Um, so that's what I did with this one. And it's just so cute. So think about who the gift is for. And like you find an ornament that you know they would love, then take the theme of that whole ornament and wrap your gift in that same theme and it can really elevate it um, and make it extra special. This is another one that I love too. It's like a white and silver paper. And I got this cool little snowflake ornament that has black and white little beads on the top, which went with, the little dots and kind of looks like garland down the paper and then I did silver and then polka dot black and white ribbon so another prime example of kind of going for a theme so that one turned out cute you know a package this size you could easily lay it down and put all that bow on the top here but this kind of takes up less foot space so I thought that was kind of a nice something different um, yeah. Uh, this is something interesting that I always do one of every year. And actually, what the centerpiece is, is a candle ring, like a small little wreath that I tied on. I tied on right here and I tied on there. And then I added this little bow and stuck this cute little star ornament in the center. You don't have to stick anything else on it, but like say you wanted to get someone a small little wreath to decorate their home. Um, this is a really creative way of giving them that gift as part of another gift, but using it as part of your presentation, just like you would an ornament or something. Um, but I thought this turned out really cute and different. And you know, you can lay it flat and you can either have it centered on the box or you can. I pulled it up a little bit so that if I wanted to stand the package up, it still looked really nice. So um, this is something I do every year and I just think it's like an interesting <coughs> take on um, 
a gift and how to present a gift. So, very cool. I think for the most part, I'm done showing you guys how to do some of this stuff. Um, I will show you quickly how you can kind of say I'm, I need to put this box and five more like it in a big bag so that I can take it over to dinner with family. And I have this fluffy little bow on top and I don't wanna ruin it. So what I do is I kind of take my fingers and pull it flat kind of just kind of lay it lay it softly flat you can even crease it lightly if you want on the but look how much flatter that got and i can easily you know put other packages on top of it and you know have them all be that way and then when i get to my destination i just fluff them up and give them a little love real quick and i have a nice bow again so you can do that with most of this ribbon and it still looks just as good as it did before. Um, you know, if you are doing that and you have ornaments that are breakable, just be very mindful of that. The weight of the gifts that you have and stacking things on top. Um, I think I showed you guys everything. I don't think there's anything else I wanted to go over. Um, but if you have more questions, I would be happy to answer them or show you more things. Sounds great. Let's see. All right. Okay. Yes. We have some questions. It looks like we're good on questions for you, Whitney. Um, some logistical stuff. We will be sending out an email tomorrow that'll have a copy of this recording. So you can go back and watch Whitney step-by-step -step through these presents. Um, there will be a coupon. Um, we will send a link to the wonderful bow tutorial video that Whitney made. Uh, Yes, so we'll be sending that as well so you can watch that step by step from top down. It's a great video. Um, and oh, we did have just have a question. Can you save the ribbons and reuse them? That's an excellent question. Yeah. Um, what my mother is notorious for this and she passed it down to me and my sister. And um, when given gifts like this, we generally tend to undo them really carefully because we're like, oh my gosh, this ribbon's really nice and pretty. I can do something with this. We just undo the package carefully and then smooth out the ribbon and just roll it up nicely. And then you can use it for gift wrapping later. You could use it um, decorating things. Uh, I always roll them up nicely and store them in a Ziploc baggie all together every year and just kind of dive into it when I'm gift wrapping the next year. And uh, that's how I reuse my ribbon. So, but it's kind of, part of the gift, you know, if I gave a gift to my mother and I used some ribbon that I had purchased, then she keeps that ribbon. And then the same for me. So like we're kind of trading ribbons each year. So it's really kind of fun. Um, so it's, it's makes it even a little bit more special every year when you do something like that. Cause uh, you know, you have a different theme or a different gift each year and it helps you kind of remember and make it even more special. So definitely use it <laughs> all righty well thank you so much whitney um as i said we'll be sending out these materials following the class if anybody has questions you guys can hit reply on the confirmation emails that will go to me i will share it with whitney um and we can get any questions to her to answer um so thank you so much for joining us today and everybody have a merry christmas thanks so much whitney thanks guys bye christmas.